Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the player ratings for Newcastle United 1, Everton 2. A fantastic three points at St. James's Park, propelling Everton up to 10th in the Premier League. And hopefully, now looking up rather than looking over our shoulder, where we pretty much were after the beginning of the month. So, uh, it's been a decent month since the. Um, well, since Marco Silva got sacked, it's been a decent month. Let's get it right. Um, a second consecutive win for Carlo Ancelotti, and he started off pretty good at Everton. Yes, let's get into it. Jordan Pickford, I'll give Jordan Pickford a seven. Big game for him last season. Um, uh, acted the GOAT, obviously. Lost focus today. Uh, made one really good save in the first half. Um, always switched on, his kicking was good, never got into any of the difficulties he did last year. Um, and with with someone like Andy Carroll knocking about a lot of high balls coming into the box, I thought he dealt with it most, most of it quite well. So, um, yeah, I've given him a seven. Um, Jibble Sidibe, I've given him a six. I thought, um, I thought first, certainly first half, they tried to exploit him going forward. Let's be honest, he's not the greatest defender in the world. He just isn't. His strength is attacking. Um, and he doesn't like to defend in his own half. And I thought, certainly first half, they exploited that. And obviously we made changes in the second half to sort of try and negate that. So, I don't think it was his best game for Everton. But he's still a really good player and I think the manager will start to understand how to use him and how he can be a big asset for the team because I think he is a big asset for the team. Um, and we've already seen that with Seamus Coleman almost playing well, playing as a third centre back against Burnley and, and how that can work going forward. And um you know, he's a really he is a he's a really good player going forward. He's just not the greatest defender in the world. So um left me with my heart and my mouth towards the end as well, because I thought he'd give a penalty away when he just nudged Andy Carroll. Um, which I have seen them given, let's be honest. He, he pushed him in the back. I've seen them given. So I'll give him a set a six. On the other side, Leighton Baines, I've given him a seven. Very solid, very professional, um, just good performance, good solid performance, the kind of performance you want when you want someone to come in and do the job. And I think that's the thing with Leighton Baines. I think for a while the temptation was, you know, he can't play and Dean needs to play every week. But now and again, you need to be able to have someone to come in and give someone a rest. Um. As, you know, we've under Marco Silva, I think we flogged a very small um, collection of players where we had alternatives, but we were never willing to just let them have the odd game every, I don't know, every six or seven games or whatever. I don't think you can go on like that. I don't think you can do that. And I think what Carlo Ancelotti has recognised today is with two games in the space of um, three days, you, we had to make changes. And I think people like Leighton Baines coming in was massive, whereas last year we didn't do that. We went from Burnley winning five one and went to Brighton, you know, and you know what? Three days later, an extra day it was, wasn't it? And um, you know, with the traveling and everything as well, though, two away games. We uh, we played, I think, basically the same team, bar maybe one or two, and it it caught up with us and it will catch up with us and it catches up with you every game. We've got another game on Wednesday. We've got another game Sunday and the big games. So we we're gonna to have to put a lot of effort in. So it was huge. It was a massive decision to make. Well, it was a bit, it's the right decision to make those changes today. And Leighton Baines come in and did an excellent job. So I've given him a seven. Michael Keane, I've given him a seven as well. He started off really, really slow. Like really, really, he worried me really early on in the game. I mean, very early on, like in the first minute. And he did lose most of his aerial battles with Michael Keane, uh, with uh, with Andy Carroll. I'll, I'll say that. <coughs> but most people will lose their little battles with my, with Andy Carroll. It's what you do after it, I think. It's how you respond to it. And I thought he defended quite well for most of the game. We know what he can't do. We know that. Um, but today, I think he showed what he can do, and he did what he can do well. I think that's the most important thing. And he never... Last year, at the, in this game, in this particular fixture... He just lost his way completely, and, and um, today I just thought he kept his head, and we had to deal with a lot of long balls in the box, and he dealt he dealt with a lot of them as well. Okay, the ones with with Carroll, maybe he didn't win a lot of them, but the ones he had to win, he won. So I think he started off very shaky, but got better. 
so I've given him a seven. Uh, Mason Holgate, I've given him a seven and a half. I think he started off a little bit nervous next to next to Michael Keane. But I think he grew into the game really, really well. Um, I don't think he looks the same player next to Michael Keane. Um, but I think he, he's got he's got a lot about him, and he you know he had a little bit of a spat with one of their players. I believe he had a bit of a spat with Fabian Delph as well, or Fabian with Fabian Delph at the end. I don't I don't know. That's what I believe. Um, not sure what that was over, but he's got something about him. <coughs> he's got something about him. This kid. He's got an attitude about him which I really like, and it's that kind of attitude. If if home the right way can take you to the very top. He's a good defender. He's a good footballer as well. He hasn't got a lot of this nonsense hype around him like someone like John Stones did. And I think with players like him, they can be the backbone of Everton's team for years to come. And I hope they are. I really hope they are. It's just about putting the right people around them because their youthful, their energy and their attitude is exactly what this team needs. And I think Mason Holgate has really come on in the last couple of months massively. So I've given him a seven and a half. Um, Sigurdsson, I've given a seven. Quite steady game. Not brilliant. Not sure why he was marking uh, Andy Carroll. I think he had a football wise, certainly in the first half. He kept things ticking over. Just playing in the midfield as a good midfielder, like we've said for a long time. Just doing his job. Not doing anything outrageous. Not trying to play in a number 10. Just playing in a role where you're asking him to just... And he, you know what he does as well? He wins the ball back quite a lot. And I think the fact that I think I think we've been playing him in the wrong position for so long. I think he should have been always been playing deeper and asked to do more because he does win the ball back quite a lot. Um, not listen, not not like not saying he's oh, he's just well beaten or anything, but he's he recently he's done what's being asked of him. That's all you can do. Long, and he's and when he's told where to play and he can't go missing, I think he does stay in the game a lot more. So I've given him a seven. Uh, Tom Davis, I give a six and a half. Obviously, he started to midfield and then he went over to the left. And I thought he did a lot right today. But for me, my my issue with Tom is, and this will be a lot of people's issue, and I think this has always been a lot of people's issue with Tom. He gives the ball away in silly areas needlessly. And I think he did that a few times today. It's far too many times when. He can play a simple ball or run into a run in a, into a a certain area of the pitch, and he doesn't. He almost tries to take the hard option, and then gets caught out. And because he's not a big lad, he gets. And he is good at winning fouls. Don't get me wrong, but you can't rely on that all the time. And if you're losing the ball in the middle of the park because you're just running with it, and then they're taking it off you, especially when there's times in that first half, in that second half, and in the first half when we needed to just keep the ball. And Tom's got to learn to do that, to do that better. And you know, we like Tom. We think he's a brilliant person, good footballer. But he's got to start realizing that the most important thing to do is keep the ball. And all round, I'd say he had a decent game today. <coughs> it was just those little moments that annoyed me. It just really annoyed me at times. Running in blind alleys where he should be realizing what he should be doing and not losing the ball. So I'll give him a six and a half. Theo Walcott, I give a five. Um, yeah, he struggled to get he struggled to get into the game, and when he did get in the game, I don't think his end product was 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 really that good. Um, obviously went off. Don't think he gives Sid be much help. Um, and you know, listen, he came back. He'd been injured. He's come back, and it was good that he came back into the side because we we needed the body, we needed the legs, but he just didn't play very well. So I've given him a five. With Charlison, I've given eight. I thought he was excellent today. I thought he was excellent. Um, we works. He just works so hard. He just works so hard. He just wants it, doesn't he? And he's he he just wants to like win every ball and run at people and and he'll get fouls and he's clever and he makes opportunities and he got an assist today. He just wants to work hard for the team and you know. <sighs> What more can you ask from the kid, you know what I mean? He scores goals, sets goals up, works hard any place you put him, does it for the team, doesn't really have an ego, seems to be enjoying himself at this club. 
and that'll take him really, really far. I just hope that now that we've got a manager like Carlo Ancelotti, that he'll want to do that with Carlo Ancelotti. And all the commentators keep on talking about, oh, he's been linked with United, blah, blah, blah. Why would you want to go to United? You're yeah, Everton. What are they doing that we're not? Nothing. So I, I just love his determination and his hard work. And yeah, brilliant. The attitude is absolutely brilliant. And between him and Dominic Calvin Lewin, they I think they've been the bedrock on what we've built this recent run on. I really, I really do think that. I think they've been absolutely brilliant. Um Moose Keane, I've given him a six. Got a start today. I thought he worked hard, I think he tried things that didn't come off. I think he should have scored and gave a couple of really good opportunities to score and didn't take them. Um obviously got subbed off. It's diff gonna be difficult for him, but I do think he's gonna get a chance with this manager. I think he's gonna get a chance. I think he's going to get a chance to to show the manager's going to fill him with confidence. And he's going to the manager's going to know how to play him as well, and that's the most important thing. But no, what's good about it as well is, is that when you look at a Moise Keane now, you look at Dominic Carvalhoon and you go, well, "That's the level you need to get at." And I think earlier on in the season, when we bought him, a lot of people thought, "Oh well, Dominic Carvalhoon will be chasing Moise Keane's," you know, <coughs> and it hasn't worked out like that. And I think that's what that's what you need. You need people fighting for the shirt. And, you know, it seems a long time ago now when Duncan took him off at Old Trafford and people were all cry assing about it and the media were all cry assing about it. That's a long time ago, doesn't it? Do you know what? Sometimes people are just need a bit of tough love in their life and so they're just not doing what they need to do. And some people respond differently. And he, he actually has responded in the right way. He hasn't sucked. He's going out there and he's working hard. It's not coming off for him. But he's still, he's still doing a job, so... Fair play. I've only given him a six, but I, I appreciate his effort. He just, but he should have took one of his chances. He should have. Um, and Dominic Cavalier, I've given him a nine. Two, two strikers goals today. You know, a ball bouncing around in the box, and he's put it in, and he's got a tapping in the far post with really good movement um, from a brilliant Charleston run. And the manager said after the game on, on Boxing Day, he had to improve his his. Um, his movement. So straight away, the manager's identified what he needs to get better at. So straight away, the manager need, knows what he needs to coach him on. So straight away, you've got a plan. And his movement for the second goal was brilliant. Just pulled away to the back post. He let the two forwards, uh, let defenders go towards the ball. Richarlison rolled the lovely ball to the back post. <coughs> and he's got to tap him from a yard. And that's, what he, that's what's been missing out of his game. And he's got two today. And his goal, he's already equaled or better this goal return from last season. He's Everton's number nine. His work rate's magnificent. He wants it. And no matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody says about Dominic Carvalho, lewin he's improved more than anybody in the Everton squad in the last 12 months. Massively improved. And you can throw me all what he scored. He's getting better. He's getting better. And that's all you can ask. That's all you can ask. He works hard. And he's getting better, and now he's scoring goals. And that's all you can ask from a player. And I'm delighted for him. Delighted for him. Because he's, I'm hope, you know, he's, it comes down to him realising what he needs to do. And I think the penny's dropped. And the manager's already said he's not going to bring in a, another striker. And that's fine. Listen, I was all on the, the slat hand train. Because <laughs> I was thinking, well, you know what, well, that's someone who can do, help these young players out. But... I didn't want them to replace players like Dominic Calvin with Charleston. Because I want those players playing. Like I said about Mason Holgate before, they're the, they're the spine of this team. They're the players. They've got the attitude. They're the young lads who want to get, get, get us to the, get us to you know European football or winning trophies. And so and I want I want that. That's what you want. You want that good mix and, and it was fantastic to see Dom get those two goals there. It really was. Really, really was. And I know on Wednesday, and I know Wednesday he'll play against City, and I know he'll have a, a good game again because he loves playing against City. And he normally gets a goal against City. I remember when we played City last time, he scored that goal, but he got it on the line. Everyone's like, why are you robbing that goal for? That's why he's robbing that goal. That's what you want from your number nine, your striker, robbing goals. So the, the confidence levels keep on going up and up and up and up and up. And I was delighted with his performance today. Him and Richarlison were absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic today. Um, so there you go. He's my man of the match. Fabian Delft came on. I've given him a seven. 
really helped to get us back in the game. Got to grip him that midfield. Manager will probably want him in more often than not, but because of legs and stuff. Uh, Yerimina, again, I've given him a seven, came in the last 10 minutes. <coughs> Steady, got helped control Andy Carroll a little bit, a bit more and dealt with the high balls into the box. And James Coleman, give him a seven as well because he's done the same thing. The subs were brilliant. The subs were all brilliant. They were all manufactured, not to to tactically to do a job and they done they all done the job perfectly. And that's what good managers do. Good in-game management. So, brilliant. Delighted with three points. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments on my player ratings. you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. Make sure to check out my instant match reaction and Baz's videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe. It's going to be boss. It's going to be a big year. 2020. It's going to be a massive year for Everton. Forget about what anyone else is doing. Massive year for Everton under Carlo Ancelotti. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give this video a like. And join us on Patreon for more great videos. Thanks for watching Toffee TV. I'll see you later.